Hey guys, Tony Soy Sass Assassin. Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna do something a little different. I have a friend that asks me a lot of random questions. And because he is not a like um experienced cigar smoker, he have a lot of those, I would say entry level, but not really entry level questions that I can answer all the time. So um, you know, based on his questions. I'm going to post it here what those answers are and hopefully those uh, questions um, are some of the questions that you have and answer it for you right here. So the first one. So in regards to why do people smell the cigar before they light it up or review it? Now I can only tell you from my personal experience is that you know when I smell the cigar, I kind of get a nuance, like an expectation of what the cigar is gonna be. So you know I can kind of tell what the flavor and sometimes strength of the cigar from smelling it. Because if something cigar is very strong, very peppery, you get it in your nose right away. Now another thing that I wanted to do it because. Uh, it's really for checking the cigar, make sure it's not bad. And what I mean by that is some cigar does mold. And a lot of times the mold is not surface mold, it's actually inside. So when you smell it, it smells really funky when you do this and that. Even though it smells a little bit mold into your body, you know the cigar is bad and you do not want to light that up. So that's like a check and make sure your cigar is good before you smoke it. And this is why we smell it and we give the notes. Uh, but that's really just make sure the cigar is good. Why do people lick and suck on the cap before they cut it? Now, some people's gotta tell you is because you want to moisten the cap so it's not crunchy to cut it. And and there's some truth to that, right? But for me, what I realized is that a lot of time when the ambient uh, is kind of dry and all that stuff. If you don't do that, the, the, the glue that they use to, the, the tree sap glue, that they use to glue the cap might be dried up and might not be holding the cap down. So when you cut it, sometimes you'll crack the side of the cap because the, the glue is not holding it. It fall off, like, you know, you, you can actually lift off an entire ring because of that, uh, the, the glue is dried or wasn't moist enough for you to cut. Now, it's also obviously puts a little bit, makes it a little bit more sponge for you cutting it. But I, what I realized is that when you do that too much, if it's sponge, it makes the cut not as sharp, right? It doesn't go through it easily, it's spongy. So it's just, you just want to make sure to do the surface and mostly at the end of the cap, the sides, not the top of the sides, so that the glue kind of get re moisturized. So it holds the cigar. That's all. That's that's really why. If they somebody say that they can put enough moisture in there, the leaf to make it not crunchy uh, enough to you know when it's really really dry, yeah, they're kidding themselves, right? Now it doesn't put that much on there, and plus you don't really want a wet spot because when you do, you start to get soggy. You don't want that, so you just want a little bit so that the the side of the cap doesn't fall. That's all. Okay, the next on the list is about relative humidity. And I have some basic demonstration for people to understand relative humidity, okay? So the myth is that you always want to keep your relative humidity to 70 degrees, 70%. 70 but <clears throat> understand that that number is not exact, it's not definite, it's just measurable. Because they're kind of equivalent in a way that I'm going to explain to you. So. 
take this bottle as an example. Okay. Now think of the bottle itself is the temperature. The water in there is the humidity. And this is how it works, right? Temperature carrying the humidity. So 100 degree temperature, 100% humidity. Think of it this way. Okay. This is 100% humidity at 100 degree temperature. So what happens when you have 100 degrees but 50% relative humidity? You get something like this. You get a full bottle, half the water. Half the water. 100 degrees, 50% humidity. So what happens if I drop the temperature? Let's say 100% uh, this is 50% humidity, 100 degrees. We drop it down to 50 degrees. Now this bottle is half the size. So ignore the top. Half the size. What happened to the same amount of water? The same amount of water became 100% humidity. You see what I mean? 100 degrees, 50 degrees, you only get half now. Now you, only, you have the same amount of water. It's still the same amount of water relatively. But you have more, uh, you have less temperature. So now you have 100% relative humidity. This is what I mean by like, you can't really pay that much attention because you have certain numbers that's equivalent. For example, you will feel the same if, let me get to the number, you are at 70% 70 70 of humidity at 70 degrees. You actually got to feel about 75 degrees, all right? You will be the same thing as if you are 71 degrees at 60% humidity. Or if you are 72 degrees at 50% humidity. It's all the same. It's like 65.50 is the same thing as 64.70. That calculation is pretty messed up as, as to how you got to feel different things. But I want you to know is that when you have relative temperature and relative humidity, you'll be okay. So if you knew you have a humidor that has about 70% humidity and today got really, really hot and that humidity dropped to like 60, don't worry about it. It's the same amount. It's the same amount, just that it got hotter. So now the bottle just got bigger. Same amount of water in there. It's not going anywhere. It's still in your humidor. But the bottle just got bigger. The temperature expand the space, allow for the same amount of water to be in. So you have a different amount of humidity. Or if you have a 70% humidity and today got really, really cold. Really, really cold. And now you're getting like 90% humidity. Same amount of water. Same amount of water. Don't worry about it. So long as you have a Bovita pack in there or something that can seal, you're not losing too much humidity, you pay a little bit of attention. Anywhere between 45% to 75% are okay. Just know that when the temperature is lower, the number might be higher. And the temperature is higher, the number might be lower. But plus minus 10, no problem. You're going to be able to smoke it. And in fact, the drier your cigar it is, the easier it is got to be burning. Okay? So I hope that answer your question in regards to uh, relative humidity. All right. The next one is going to be why does my cigar blows up, cracks, and flares, and, 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 and just not, it's, it just looks like something blew up on the inside and it bulges up and then uh, it cracked a leaf. This happens when you have too much humidity inside and the temperature rises. So when you are smoking a cigar, there is some humidity inside the cigar compared to the outside. Outside obviously gotta be dry, it depends on the, the situation. And when, especially when it's cold, okay? So let's, when it's cold, the, the, the water contracts, right? When it's hot, the water expands. So when you're smoking the cigar, you're drawing hot air through your cigar. Once you draw the hot air through the cigar, you're heating up all those moisture inside your tobacco. That makes the tobacco expand 
on the inside. And that pushes the cigar out. Because the outside still got to be colder than the inside because um, you're drawing hot air through, not over, right? You're going to have that expansion. This is one of those things that you know, when you know your cigar is kind of spongy, it's kind of wet, leave it on the table for a few days. Leave it in the dry box for a few days because you need that equal rebellion. You need that, the, the steam to kind of, uh, not steam, but moisture to kind of move out of it and to have the temperature more balanced between the two uh, extreme. And that way it won't cause that. But here's the thing, even if it kind of expand and explode, you still can smoke the cigar. It's just most likely you got to taste a lot of steam. Not a lot of good taste. And that will be it for this particular episode of basic question that cigar people want to know. And I hope that answers your question. And if it does and it helps you and it helps any other people that's getting into cigars, please make sure to like and comment and share, you know, and uh, super thanks if you want or uh, join the uh, Alliance of the Legion if you want. Do all that stuff. But likes are free. So uh, I hope you guys do that and I hope you guys subscribe. And give me more ideas in the comments what kind of questions you have and I'll make sure to answer them, okay? So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.